Hello, today I'm gonna to be talking about yarn counters and this is my latest prototype. It's definitely making really good progress, but instead of talking about my prototype today, I wanted to talk about a problem with yarn counters and this affects all of the hobbyist level yarn counters I've seen. I'm sure that industrial textile factories have solved this with their yarn counters and I can think of several really good ways to solve it at their scale. However, the solutions at big scale wouldn't really scale down to the hobbyist market. So I wasn't sure, I was kind of hoping I wouldn't have to solve the problem. But as feedback has come in from multiple beta testers, it is a significant problem and it's something that I think I wanna solve. I wanna basically talk to you guys in the community and sort of get your feedback on whether this is something we should solve. It makes the software a little bit more complicated to use, but it's not too bad. So anyways, before I get into the solution, I want to describe what the problem actually is. So the way that all the yarn counters I've looked at perform in the hobbyist market is yarn comes in and then it spins a wheel like this and then it exits. So this looks a lot different than most yarn counters out there, but it, it functions in a very similar way where the as the yarn goes around this pulley, we it counts the number of times the pulley goes around and then by using the size of the pulley it can calculate the length of the yarn so uh, that's how all yarn counters work and now I'm gonna start talking about the actual problem in this case we've here's a sort of a cutaway of the pulley and you've got some round yarn in the middle and the you, you can sort of see here that there's this height component we'll talk about the width in a little bit but the height of the yarn is important because, let me bring another diagram over, because we need to know the diameter of the pulley. And initially I was just sort of saying, oh yeah, it's from here to here is the diameter of the pulley. And uh, that's accurate for the pulley. However, when you start having yarn, the diameter of the pulley grows by the diameter of the yarn. So um, the radius of this yarn plus the radius on the other side equals um, one diameter or two, two X the radius. Anyways, basically, if you have big yarn, this is going to start to be a significant amount of increase to the diameter of the pulley. And if you have little yarn, it's not going to affect. And that's exactly what we're seeing with error uh, during testing. Really, little yarn doesn't have really any error and large yarns will have more error so the so what you need to do is you need to sort of calculate the diameter of the yarn so that you can sort of solve this problem and uh being an engineer i have calipers and i'm like oh yeah i'll just measure diameter of yarn there uh, there it's about this is like 1.5 millimeters okay we're good but i understand that you know most knitters aren't going to want to measure yarn like that. So I started thinking about this and there's um, lots of different ways that people measure the wraps per inch of yarn. So that's basically you take the yarn and you sort of wrap it around a tool that measures um, the yarn and you see how many wraps you can get. So here's one that I've sort of wrapped around and after doing that uh, there's 16 wraps in one inch with this. There's other ways of measuring it like here I have little image that I can sort of compare and it's a you know this yarn is a little bit um, smaller than the 14 wraps per inch and a little bit bigger than the 20 so yeah it, it falls between you know it's 16 according to this and this image is sort of getting it now the problem is that measuring your wraps per inch is notoriously difficult and people get different results the good thing is for this case you don't need to be exact so we'll talk about errors in a little bit. But before I get into that, I want to talk about another problem that does definitely affect everything. And um, that's how the yarn gets squished. So this is sort of ideal. And in this case, your width and height of the yarn is the same because it's a perfect circle. However, that's not actually how a yarn counter is going to work. Um, what's actually going to happen is the yarn's going to get squished and your width uh, is going to get a little wider and your height is going to get a little bit um, shorter or smaller. So the width grows and the height shrinks. So if we look at 
let's go. Hmm. Yeah, let's go to this picture. So um, the good thing is that um, if we look at these two pictures, when it squishes, it actually affects the di diameter of the pulley, the effective diameter of the pulley less. So that's that's good. That means the amount of air is going to be less. The problem is it's still being significant, but it's not quite as bad as what you would think um, if you just simply used a, w, a wraps per inch tool to measure it. So the other thing to consider is when you use these tools, the actual tool is sort of squishing. This is one of the reasons that measuring WPI is difficult. The amount of tension you put around it. Um, if you put like in theory, no tension, you get perfectly round yarn. But if you put too much tension, you sort of squish the yarn and you're like, oh, we're squishing it. That's good. But it's actually not because what you're doing is you're measuring the width of the yarn here and not the height of the yarn. So as you're wrapping yarn on a wraps per inch tool, you're actually going to be making the yarn wider and you actually want to make it narrower because that's how <laughs> the uh, error is calculated on the pulley. So basically the gist of it is your wraps per inch on a tool like this is not going to be exact. There's no way you're going to get the same tension and the right squishing effect uh, as you're getting on the yarn counter. However, it doesn't have to be exact because the amount of error from this actually is not huge. So I calculated theoretical error here on this um, table and you can see uh, the, the interesting numbers are down here on the bottom row. So these are the uh, percentage error theoretical if the yarn is perfectly round. And if you have uh, 40 wraps per inch yarn, you're right around 1% error. So that's, that's a very small amount of error because you're going to get um, some error just from the yarn stretching. And I'll probably have a different video about how yarn stretches and things. Uh, and how you want to be consistent when you're measuring it, but know that there will be some error. I just don't want too much error. So if it was just 1%, I would probably say, okay, that, that's good. Um, however, as you get to really big um, wraps per inch yarn, it can creep up to like 9% or so. And that's theoretical. I actually think the actual er errors here are going to be maybe half of this or maybe even a little less, but... I'm not sure. So we're testing that right now with lots of different yarn and trying to get um, actual amounts of error. This is something I could correct in software on my yarn counter. So what I would probably add is um, a menu option to enter in the wraps per inch of your yarn. And the thing is, you don't need to get an exact wraps per inch. I mean, here you can sort of see, even if I put just a few different uh, wraps per inch in the menu and use that to sort of estimate a new diameter for the pulley, I could greatly reduce the amounts of error. So nothing we do is going to be perfect. And I could just ship it the way it is. And it's going to have, you know, basically very small to no error for really small yarn and a little bit more error for big yarn. I mean, that might be acceptable, or I could add this other menu option so that you could enter in an approximate wraps per inch for your yarn, and I could reduce it. it. It wouldn't be zero error, but it would be better than any other yarn counter that I know of in the hobbyist market. So I guess my question to the people here is, uh, should I continue working on solving this and adding something into the software so you can reduce this kind of error, or do you just want to keep the device simple and not worry about it and know that what, what actually happens is that the yarn counter underestimates the length of the yarn. So it might say that you've got 100 yards of yarn when actually you have 103 yards of yarn or something like that. So let, let me know what you think about this. A and if you have a better solution than using WP, you know, the wraps per inch, uh, definitely share, share thoughts on that. But I thought that that would be the the least confusing to knitters and I didn't want to like suggest people actually try to measure the diameter of yarn which I think would s confuse a lot of knitters and my goal is to make this tool really easy to use and uh, more accurate than anything else on the market so yeah let me know what you guys think